Andreas Stewart does not get around. I always experience a bit of consternation when I come to the concluding novel in a trilogy. What if it's a dud? What if these worlds and characters whom I've grown to adore and care about over dozens of hours and several years? What if they're done disservice by their makers? Or at least what seems like a disservice to us? It's happened to me. It's probably happened to you. And it's fine when it does, but it can still carry a sting. Fuck. My opening will have tipped you off, but this is not the case with Stewart's Bone Shard War, a conclusion that sticks the landing by delivering and over-delivering on the promises the series made across the previous two installments. The magic of the Drowning Empire is deepened, the themes of identity, societal change and environmental exploitation are expanded on, and of course, the compelling narratives of our protagonists, antagonists and those between the two reach their conclusion. Two years after the close of the Bone Shard Emperor, Jovis is in a rough spot. It's hard to read or listen to, in truth, because the unwitting hero of the previous books has been forced into what can only be described as magical slavery, bound to the will of a cruel master. We first meet him weak and dispirited from years of doing the dirty work of the dastardly smugglers, criminals and entrepreneurs, the Eye of Khan. Mephi, his ocelin, is the only thing to keep him going more than once throughout the novel. The trauma those two years have marked Jovis with is palpable in every chapter he is in. It's one of my worst nightmares to be under the control of another, my agency violated. The slow rebuilding of Jovis's spirit, his willingness to defy the man who has made a prison of his own body, makes for the kind of reading that stays with you and it spoke to me as it was a very personal fear. Jovis is as wonderful as he ever was in some ways, and uh, as fine a liar as always. His is a beautifully executed character arc, and it's not the only one. Lin's struggle to keep her empire together is all the more fierce as issues she thought resolved and enemies she thought defeated come back to haunt her. She is a good person, but not, I think, what we would consider a good emperor. Historically, at any point. Not in so far as the practicalities of rule demand. Lin is heroic. She is noble of spirit. She spends a chunk of this novel flitting back and forth, trying to gather magical artifacts in the hopes they will help her keep the empire safe. Lin cares for her subjects, nay, for her people. She even cares for her foes. Her caring for those foes, her attempts to be different, better than the previous emperors in the Sukai dynasty, is at least part of why the empire is in the condition we find it. Enacting change on a societal scale is no easy task. Renami and Falu are each faced with challenges of their own. Renami is forced to muster a defence at home, while Falu is busy first in training the Emperor in sword combat, and later in helping Lin sail around the Empire and collect ancient artefacts. I've mentioned as much in my reviews of the other two books, but despite the conservative estimates of their point-of-view chapters, lengthwise compared to Lin and Jovis, they're much shorter, their presence looms just as large. So too the case with Nisong, whose antagonism towards Lin is reason for no end of woes, Yet her relationship with Ocelin Loji is a bright spot in the darkness, much like Jovis's relationship with Mephi and Linz with Trana. I slapped my forehead over not one, but two revelations in the span of this novel. Stewart delivers them masterfully, and though I once spoiled him, I have to tip my hat for the series-long misdirects which serve to build up such fine moments of reversal. The culmination of this series has heart to spare. It's been a pleasure to spend time in this world, and I'm sure I will return to it in the future. There's much of what you'll find in Stewart's prose, from the characters to the continued top-notch world-building and marathon-like conflict that gives you what feels like precious seconds to catch your breath. I listened to the audiobook version of The Bone Shard War, provided by Netgalley and Orbit. 
Thanks for that, and I'm sorry it's taken me months to wrap up writing this review. It's become something of a ritual to commend narrators Emily Wu Zeller, Theodore Chin and Nathalie Norders for signature performances over five different points of view and dozens of distinctly voiced characters. And these are staggering talents in the world of voiceover, and I've often bought books only because of their narration. Fun fact, I bought The Bone Shard Daughter and the first of this Drowned Empire trilogy, mainly because I'd been so impressed with Emily Wu Zeller's performance in This Is How You Lose the Time War. You should read this book if... You have good taste in fantasy, really. You find yourself suddenly accompanied by a small, cute and extremely conversational hairy critter that crawled out of the sea. Maybe you want to find out more about it. In that case, you can use the Drowned Empire trilogy as something of a guidebook. You love maritime fantasy replete with adventure, danger, excellent portrayal of romance. And more, probably. Alongside Tchaikovsky's Lords of Uncreation, this has quickly become a favourite ending to a trilogy in 2023. I hope that you'll bend a knee and give it a listen, or read it. And if you're unfamiliar with the previous books in the series, you should most certainly check out my reviews. They might clarify much that I have not stopped to explain once more here. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, ring that bell, leave a comment down below. Have you any experience with maritime fantasy? Have you heard of Stewart's excellent Drowned Empire series? If not, well, you know now what to pick. And of course, don't forget to click that subscribe button. I enjoy making these videos for you, and... Um, I hope that you will join me again when I come back with whatever it is I'm reviewing next. Till then, I'm Philip Magnus, you're not. See you next time. Bye!